Dad with Simple Suburban Living and today we're going to be doing some uh, cleanup on a Windows Vista computer so kind of follow along in the series here if you've seen the um, other computer cleanup uh, tutorials that I've done. Um, again this is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to clean up a, a computer running Windows Vista, any version of Windows Vista um, from start to finish using all included tools so we're not going to be downloading or installing any additional software or anything like that um, all in, uh, included tools that come with uh, with Windows Vista um, again this is a step-by-step -step tutorial so it's gonna be good for any level of user so if you're a, an average or beginning user and you just want to clean up your computer or you're having problems with it or it's running slow or you're getting lots of advertisements and other things popping up and you just want to kind of go through a, a good cleanup um, and also kind of learn a process to clean up your computer on a regular basis um, this is a, an excellent tutorial for you so um, again this is going to be a step-by-step -step process there's four steps to the uh, to the cleanup that we're going to do today and we'll go ahead and get right into it Alright, so for the, the first step here in the cleanup process, um, I always like to do some preliminary checks on the computer just to make sure that uh, everything is running the way it should and we're, that we're doing the right service here. Uh, make sure we don't have any obvious hardware problems or obvious virus infections. So uh, we do have some junkware installed or on the computer here that I'll go through here in just a little bit. I did install some stuff that we'll clean up in a little while. Um, but uh, the first thing I want to do is actually check to, to see if we have any actual virus infections. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just open up uh, my security program here. Now this is just a free, real basic security product from Microsoft called Microsoft Security Essentials. Um, I've already run a full scan here and so I know that there's no virus infections. But I recommend that you run a full scan with whatever security program that you have. So if you have uh, Avast or AVG or Kaspersky or Norton or whatever it is, um, just go ahead and open it up and uh, there'll be an option in there to run a full scan and scan now. Go ahead and do that. It might take some time, but go ahead and just let that run through and uh, do a full scan on the computer. If it does come up with any obvious virus infections, you'll want to actually deal with those first before you go through this standard cleanup. Um, this is a des this cleanup is designed for um, a computer that does not have any um, obvious virus infections. And another check I like to do, just make sure you have enough RAM in your computer. So first thing I'll have you do is just click on the start button in the bottom left hand corner here and go ahead and find the computer menu. Now if your start menu doesn't look like this, I will show you really quickly how to make it look like this because there are other versions of the Windows Vista start menu. And so let's actually start with that. So if your, if your menu does not look like this, um, go ahead down to the taskbar anywhere in the blank area down here and just do a right click and then we're gonna go to properties here and right up at the top you'll see some tabs click on start menu and you want this to be on start menu here if you go to classic start menu it won't have some of the features that we're going to be using today during the cleanup so I would recommend you change it to start menu make sure it's selected here and then go down and click OK so going back to the start menu, open that up, and you're going to do a right click on the computer and go down to properties. And this is just going to real briefly display some system information. So there's a lot of different things here, what kind of operating system you have, what service pack you have installed. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but you definitely should have service pack 2 installed with Windows Vista. Down here somewhere in the center you'll see some information on the computer hardware, the processor, and how much RAM you have, and whether it's 32 or 64-bit. So Windows Vista is the first um, series of operating systems from Microsoft that actually um, comes in, in a common form uh, of with a 32 or a 64-bit operating system. So you may have either. Generally lower performance machines have 32-bit and the higher end systems had a 64-bit during this time period. Um, recommended uh, installed mem memory or RAM for Windows Vista is going to be upwards of two gigabytes. If you have two gigabytes that's probably the very bare minimum. I actually have less than that on this because this is just a test system but I would recommend that you have at least three gigabytes of RAM that's recommended for a 32-bit operating system and if you have a 64-bit operating system then you could actually recommend it have four gigabytes of RAM. So those are just recommendations. The system, especially Windows Vista, will run much better if you have three or four gigabytes of RAM. If you need to know how to upgrade the RAM in your computer, I do have another video on that. Go ahead and check through and uh, 
pull up that video we can talk about how to actually change this and upgrade that to the right amount. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and close this out. So we're going to assume that you have enough RAM in your computer. If you don't have enough, you can still run through the cleanup, but uh, that is something we'd recommend that you uh, handle. So we're going to go back down to your start menu here and just do the last check that we're going to do in this pre-tune-up or pre-cleanup check. And left-click this time on the computer. And this is going to open up your window here that's going to show your hard drive um, icons, your CD player, and all that good stuff. So what I'm going to have you do is just actually right-click on your, your uh, hard drive icon. And you're going to go down to the Properties menu. As you can see, this computer needs a little tune-up. It's running slow, and again, we run on a low amount of RAM. So, All right, so we're going to go down to Properties here. And this is just going to show some information about the hard drive. So you'll see how much space you have available, how much free space, and all that good stuff. We're actually going to go up to the top here to Tools, left-click. And there's an error checking section here. You're going to hit on Check Now. And I'm not going to do this at this time because I've already done it on this computer, but what this is going to do is just, it's going to actually walk you through a process to reboot your computer and run through a few checks on the hard drive. Um, so uh, once you do this, actually hit continue on the user account control message. And you want to select both of these boxes. And then you're going to hit start. And this is going to tell you that uh, it's going to schedule this check for the next time you reboot your computer. Go ahead and restart your computer and it will automatically run through this hard drive check. This checks for any errors on the on the hard drive. It actually will attempt to fix any bad sectors or on the hard drive that you find um, or try to actually uh, mark those as bad sectors so that they're not used in the future. So this can actually identify problems with the computer and help speed up the hard drive a little bit if you've got some, some minor problems with that. Things you want to look for during that check, and we'll go ahead and close these things out. During that uh, little hard drive test there, if you get a blue screen or the computer crashes or you actually end up with some error messages while it's running the check, you know you actually may have some problems with the hard drive. Um, and that, that's something that you'll want to deal with uh, with replacing that, that hard drive. All right, so we're done with the preliminary checks here, and we'll go ahead and move right into step two. All right, so we're on to step two here, and uh, this is where the bulk of the cleanup is going to take place. And we'll go ahead and dig in. The first thing I like to do is just go ahead and get all the temporary files and other stuff uh, cleaned out and deleted off the computer. So this just frees up some disk space and makes sure that we um, don't have any extra junk files that we don't need on the system. So the first thing we're going to do is go down to the Start menu here. And we're going to be using the search a lot to open up different little uh, uh, programs and things on the computer. So the first thing we do down in this little search box at the bottom is type in the word disk, D-I-S-K. And you'll see up at the top in the search results, it'll pop up and say disk cleanup. I already have that open on the computer, so I won't open it again. But you'll go ahead and click on that. That's going to open up a box and ask you whether you want to clean up files for just this user account or all user accounts on the system. I would recommend that you choose all user accounts and then click continue on that. It'll run through a little scanning process and then it's going to pop up with this window. So this is where you get to select um, anything you want to delete off the system. I recommend that you just go through down the list here and check on everything. Um, there's really nothing in here that uh, you could delete that would cause any type of problems. Um, sometimes I might leave thumbnails on just because then they don't have to repopulate, but uh, um, there's nothing in here that you, you really need to save. You can go through and just check all these boxes. Now, if you really want to clean up and save extra hard drive space, you can also click on more options at the top, and you can go down and click on under where it says System Restore and Shadow Copies, you can click Clean Up here. This will run a little bit deeper um, cleaning on the hard drive and clean up any old restore points and extra shadow copies, which are extra copies of files that you might have on the computer that could be removed as well. Um, I don't recommend doing that unless you actually are, you know, really need the, the hard drive space. Those generally um, are okay to keep the other the other um, other files. So once you have all these selected here, go ahead and click on OK. Are you sure you want to delete the files? Yes, we are. And it'll go ahead and go through its deleting process. Now, I don't have too many files on the computer here, so it's probably not going to take too long. But in the meantime, we'll move on to the next step. So down 
again your start menu and in the search box this time we're going to type the word program and up at the very top you're going to see uh, the search result that will say programs and features and you want to go ahead and select that again I already have that open on my on the computer here to save us a little time so once you open up programs and features you're going to see a big long list populate of all the different programs you have installed. Now I don't have too many installed on this computer again because it's just a test system um, but I did install some junk that you may have on your computer. Um, a lot of times I see this when I do cleanups on computers so things that you do want um, Adobe Player, Adobe Reader, Java, um, your security program, anything that says Microsoft, Microsoft.net, or Microsoft Office, there'll be a bunch of those entries in there. Um, other software that you may have installed purposefully, obviously. Um, so anything in here that's from your computer manufacturer, that you're, you know, a game that you're playing, or anything that you need, you don't want to take off, obviously. Anything else that you may have installed by accident, uh, uh, you, it's an obvious toolbar. It, it's labeled as an updater or a toolbar or um, I also have a list online that I'll post in the description of known programs that are safe to remove out of here things that are advertisement related or toolbar related or updaters that can be removed or other software that I remove on a daily basis from from computers that will help um, speed your system up so you can always reference that list if you need to but you want to go through this com this list and you want to remove anything that you don't need anymore anything that's advertisement related or anything that uh, um, is basically slowing your computer down so I'm going to go ahead and do that now I'll speed up the video a little bit until this process is finished So now that we've got all that program cleanup done and removed all those toolbars and updaters and programs and uh, registry cleaners and tune-up software or anything like that that you have installed on the computer, we've gone through and cleared all that stuff out so it's no longer starting up with the computer, it's no longer uh, um, scanning the system or doing anything uh, that's slowing us down. So the next thing we're going to do is move into um, optimizing startup of the computer. So a pretty simple way to do that, I'm going to go down to the start menu and we're in our handy dandy little search box down here we're going to type in ms config that's m-s-c-o-n-f-i-g and at the top of our search results you'll see ms config pop up microsoft configuration utility click on that and this is going to get our user account control continue this is a um, built-in utility again this is uh, quite a few different things that we can do with this utility um, during the tune-up here we're just going to mainly focus on startup um, so once this opens up here we're going to look for our startup tab and in this list here your computer will probably have quite a few more things um, this is just a test system so there's not a whole lot installed here but in your startup items list you probably have a bunch of things from your computer manufacturer whether it be HP or Dell or Toshiba or Sony um, Acer, Asus, whatever it is. You may see some things from your manufacturer in here. You might see your printer software listed in here. Your security software should definitely be listed here. Um, you might see some entries from Adobe or Java. Um, most of that stuff is, is okay to have here. Um, generally, rule of thumb for startup, um, you can't really hurt anything by unchecking something. If you happen to click on the wrong thing and remove it from startup, it's not going to ruin anything. It just won't start that program with your computer some things you want to start with your computer again would be your security software obviously um, your printer software you probably want to start up because that enables some features with your printer any other software that you have uh, for business or work that you want to start up if there's any entries for Microsoft Office or Word in here you can leave those things that you definitely want to remove would be any toolbars any um, remnants of programs that are left over anything that has like a grayed out entry here or a missing file you want to uncheck that from startup any toolbars any updaters anything from Adobe or Java actually can be removed it's not necessary to start up with your computer um, I'll have a more detailed list in the description um, on our blog that will give you some more advice on what to remove and what to leave 
So once you go through that process and you uncheck the items that you do not want to start up with the computer, you'll go ahead and click on Apply over here and then click OK and that'll close down your system configuration utility and we'll be done with that startup process. The next thing you want to do is clean up some browsers here. So go ahead and open up Internet Explorer and I'm mainly going to focus on Internet Explorer today just because that's the default browser here with Windows Vista. So once you open up Internet Explorer, you're going to go up to your settings menu your tools menu, excuse me, in the upper right hand corner and you're going to open up Internet Options. Alright, so we're going to go over here to Internet Options and we're going to do two things with the browser. The first thing is we're going to reset the browser right back to its factory default condition. So that's going to wipe out any toolbars or add-ins or extra stuff that may have gotten installed or collected. So after you open up Internet Options, across the top here, you're going to click on the Advanced tab, and then down towards the bottom here, you're going to see the Reset button. And what this is going to do is it's going to disable all that stuff that we just talked about, tool toolbars and add-ins and um, extra things that we don't want uh, loading up with the browser. You're going to click on that Reset button, and then you're going to have an option here. Now, generally I delete personal settings also, but read through what it's going to delete here. It's going to reset your home pages, it's going to reset your search provo uh, search providers, it does also do another deletion of this stuff which we actually deleted earlier with the temp, uh, temp file cleanup. Um, generally this is okay to do. Um, it is going to reset your home page so you will have to change that back to whatever you want it to be. So go ahead and hit reset here and it'll go through a process. Um, disable everything, it tells you kind of what it's doing here and delete the personal settings last. Once this is done, we're going to close our browser out and then we can open it back up and it's going to be, everything will be disabled and back to its factory default. Alright, so we've got our browser all reset back to default, so you probably have MSN as your as your home page and again you can change that back uh, to whatever you'd like. So we're going to do one more thing here, go back to tools and back to internet options and under the internet options we're going to go over to the programs tab so again up at the top here over to programs and manage add-ons so this is where a lot of junk ends up collecting here and the main thing we want to focus on that does not get reset is your search providers so go ahead and click on the search providers over here now I just have Bing in here again because this system is pretty clean what you may end up having is you may end up having a, a whole bunch of other junk listed in your search providers. You might have Conduit or Inbox or um, other, you know, Yahoo, Amazon, uh, um, other advertisement uh, type search providers. What I recommend doing is go ahead and stick in with Bing or Google as a default. So if you have other ones in here, you'll go ahead and click on them and down here will be a remove button. You can click remove and individually remove each one of those ones that you do not want in there. Again, I would leave Bing and uh, Google and set whichever one you prefer as your default. And you can use this default button here to set whichever one you want as your default. So what that does for you is whenever you're doing a search up here in the search box, um, so when you're typing in your, your address and you type in whatever you want, um, and you hit enter, it's going to do a search with that default provider. Now if advertisement providers get in there, it'll actually end up per, you know, giving you a bunch of search results that are advertisement related. They're not actually Google or Bing regular search results. So you want to be careful with, well, what, uh, with what search provider you use. So we'll go ahead and close this out and we're done with the browser cleanup. The other thing we're going to do here um, if you do have Google Chrome, and I won't go through this entire process here, but Google Chrome is very similar. There's extensions and there's search providers that can get added into Google Chrome as well. So I recommend that you go through and do the same type of thing. You'll go up to settings in Google Chrome, or up to the menu uh, button here in the upper right hand corner. Go down to settings. And you're going to end up with a couple different things you can check through. Uh, one of them is going to be extensions. And you click on the extensions option here. It's going to list, and again, you may have some advertisement extensions and toolbars and other things in here that you can trash and, and delete. And the other thing you want to check is those search providers. So very similar to Internet Explorer. 
so you'll see extensions over here on the left hand side if you click on that that'll load up our extensions and again this system should be pretty clean so we don't have any in here but if you do see some things listed in your extensions window like toolbars and other things that you don't want you could just go over and hit the little trash can and that'll delete those and then over in settings um, this is where you'll see your search providers as well as your uh, home page so um, on startup open specific pages you can open this and make sure that that's set to not go to an advertisement your home button you can change that and make sure it's not set to go to any type of advertisement and scrolling down a little bit you can manage your search engines and you can make sure that that's set to Google or Bing again um, Google Chrome comes by default with AOL and Ask I usually get rid of those as well since those aren't one search uh, providers that I use and Yahoo as well um, I tend to stick to Bing and Google just because they seem to be the most reliable so remove the ones you don't want hit done and hit uh, close out Google Chrome and we're done with the the main part of the cleanup so we'll go ahead and move on to uh, step three here alright we're almost finished here with the cleanup and the, the step step three here the third step we're gonna do is is getting everything up to date so this is the update step um, basically after everything's cleaned up and we've got everything uh, um, kind of running faster startups been cleaned up programs been removed the next thing you want to do is make sure everything's up to date the reason you want to have up-to-date software um, for Windows Adobe Java is for security mainly and performance as well so they're these manufacturers are constantly releasing updates to their software to help make things more secure and run faster for you um, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is updating Windows and how you're going to make sure that Windows is up to date is just go ahead and click on your start menu again we're going to use our little search box here for just a quick way to get to the Windows update applet and that is W U A P P stands for Windows update applet and you'll see once you type that in you've got an option at the top for W A W U A P P go ahead and click on that and this opens up the Windows update applet which I already have open here and you should see a screen that looks similar to this so there's a couple things here that are important um, first things first if you have this option down here to um, basically change your pr search provider or your update provider to Microsoft update rather than Windows update I would recommend doing that um, what that does is you just click here for details and say yes tell me about new software um, this just adds all the Microsoft software to your automatic update process so um, if you have any Microsoft uh, um, accessories if you have any other Microsoft software installed um, Microsoft Office things like that it'll automatically update along with Windows um, it's just a easier thing for you to keep up with updates so here you've got two sections important updates and optional updates so important updates will install automatically usually overnight at three o'clock in the morning these are released once a week every Tuesday from Microsoft these will automatically install if everything's working properly optional updates will not automatically install you don't have to install these I do recommend that you at least take a look click on that and you may have some driver updates for like your Intel products or um, like I have a network update for a network adapter here um, some other Windows uh, updates that might be optional generally general rule of thumb is I would go ahead and install all of those um, again these are generally released right through the Microsoft or Windows update channel and they are good to download again these fix security problems or performance issues some other things in here that you may not want to do being desktop being bar um, don't recommend doing those because they do slow the computer down a little bit Windows Live Essential is not necessary as well um, unless you, that's something that you want uh, we won't cover that here so hit the back button at the top what you do want to do is make sure that you if you don't do any optional updates make sure you do all the important updates so to manually install those just go ahead and click install updates and I'm not going to do that now but uh, you'll go ahead and click that and it'll go through a process and probably tell you to reboot the computer when it's done and that's all that's that uh, that we need to do there make sure all those updates are installed and reboot the computer when you're finished so we can close that and then the last thing we need to do as far as updates are concerned there are, there are three main um, things that uh, you uh, are not Windows uh, products that you want to keep in updated and installed on your computer those are Adobe Flash Player Adobe Reader and Java 
So I recommend that you visit each one of those sites individually. Um, the actual site, just to make sure you're at the right place, is git.adobe.com slash reader and git.adobe.com slash flash player. And that'll get you to the site to um, download and install those products. Watch out for optional offers always when you're installing updates. Uncheck anything like that, unless it's something you want, of course. And Java is the last one. Um, this one's right at www.java.com slash en for English. And click on the big free Java download button. Download and install that. So again, I'm not going to go through that process. It's very straightforward. You're going to download and install that software just to make sure that you have all the um, add-ins up to date. That's going to help you out a lot, especially if you're using email on the internet, uh, if you're doing any type of video like YouTube, things like that. You want to have Flash Player, Adobe Reader is great for opening in PDF documents. You might get attachments in, in your email or other things like that. So you want to have all those installed and up to date. There are also a lot of vulnerabilities and security problems with Java and things, so you always want to make sure you have the latest release of those. And that actually wraps it up for step three. So we'll go ahead and move on to the final step here in step four. All right, so we're on the final step here. We're just going to do some um, quick closing things here for our cleanup. And basically the two main things we're going to do is create a restore point and do a defragmentation of the hard drive. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and create that restore point. So go down to your start button here and type in the word restore. And up at the top of your search results, you'll see system restore pop up and user account control will ask us to continue. We'll say OK. And so what this is going to do is create a snapshot of this computer after we've done all of our cleanup today. So we've got the computer in good working state and we're going to create this snapshot. So just in case you have trouble down the road, something goes wrong, uh, update fails, bad software installation, virus infection, whatever, the, the problem might be you can always revert back to today where the system's in a good working condition. So once the screen opens up, you're going to click on the blue link for open system re or open system protection down here at the bottom. And once this is opened up, hard drive your your system hard drive should already be selected, and you can just click on the create button down here, and you can give it a name. So let's say after cleanup. Now I'm not going to create a, another restore point because I've already done that, but you'll just hit the create button here and it'll go ahead and create that snapshot. So I'm going to cancel out of these things and we'll move on to the next step. Last thing that you do with the cleanup is do that disk defragmentation. Now I'm going to go down to our start button and type in the word defrag and type and click on disk defragment that pops up here. So one of the nice uh, um, updates with Windows Vista is that they actually automated this process. So this isn't actually something that you have to do um, on a regular basis anymore, uh, as you did with Windows XP. Um, but I recommend that anytime you do a cleanup, like we did today, which I do recommend you do about every 30 to 60 days, run through this process, I recommend that you check your defragmenter. Make sure that the schedule is set. Um, by default, it will be ske scheduled for 1 o'clock AM every Wednesday morning. Um, it does defragment the disk automatically when the computer is in an idle state, so you shouldn't actually need to manually do this. But I would recommend you just check, make sure everything's set to be on a schedule, like it's uh, like it's supposed to, and that it's running. It will tell you here when the last time it is that it ran, and the next scheduled time, so you know if things work in the way it should. So again, nothing that you really need to do here. If you really want to, you're going to go ahead and hit defragment now, and it will run that process just to make sure that it's done. Um, but otherwise, you can just leave it alone. So go ahead and close this out. And the last thing, if you want, these are just kind of extras, uh, something that I didn't mention earlier. Vista does load with the sidebar. You can get all these little gadgets in here. Um, if these are kind of slowing you down, I, I do recommend you keep these gadgets to a minimum. You can hit the little X's on the corners of these and close these gadgets out. Um, if you do have these running with Windows Vista, again, they do slow down startup time quite a bit. They do slow the computer down a little bit. So you can actually close all those out. If you really want to close the sidebar out completely, you can right click anywhere in this area over here and hit close sidebar, and it'll just completely get rid of that. As you can see, our little help messages popping up down here. 
So that is pretty much it. There's uh, kind of the four steps for cleaning up Windows Vista. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please throw them in the comment section. I do monitor the channel regularly, so hopefully I can get back to you and answer any of those questions that you do have. Um, go ahead and like the video if it was informative to you. Hopefully it was. Um, and uh, share the video out with anyone else who could use the information. Hopefully this found you well. And uh, remember to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing any, any other videos. Check out what we have available. Um, we have aquaponics videos and um, other type of gardening videos there as well, as well as product reviews. And I will be regularly releasing some uh, technology tips and tricks and things like that as well. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, go ahead and hit subscribe. Other than that, thanks for watching and have a good one.